Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I earned 8 million rep in one night in Need for Speed Heat. Let's go! The Militia Gaming Community and Dave Loves Games came together to create a community Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, there's an invite link in the description down below. This is the best way to keep up on what's going on with both of our channels. So make sure you hit that invite link and we'll catch you over there. Earning rep in Need for Speed Heat is obviously an essential part of leveling up and unlocking the ultimate plus parts. You know that and that's why you're here watching this video. Well, I'm not gonna waste any of your time. Let's get into how this is done. First, we will need to make sure your car setup is correct. For this, I chose the 2010 Subaru WRX STI. It's an all-wheel drive car, so its acceleration is top-notch, which is helpful for running from the cops. It's got some off-road DNA, so it doesn't take as much damage as some of the other cars in the game, and with the correct auxiliary parts, it can be a tank for quite some time. As far as the build goes, I've already earned the Ultimate Plus parts, so I'm using those with the dual turbo and 5x3 pound NOS option, all on the 4.4 liter V8 engine. I've got the Super Track suspension, Elite brakes, Elite race tires, Elite Plus clutch, 8 speed gearbox, and Super Track differential. The auxiliary parts are extremely important, and through hours of testing, I've determined that the two options that work the best for me are the repair kits and the radar disruptor. A lot of people run damage reduction, but from what I've found out, the benefits of the damage reduction do not outweigh the benefits of the radar disruptor. If you think about it, damage reduction is for when you're being hit by the cops or you run into walls and Radar Disruptor makes it so that the distance at which a police car can find you is smaller. Damage Reduction is betting that you're going to get hit, and Radar Disruptor is betting that you won't get found. One is betting for failure, the other one is betting on success, and I bet on success all day long. So Repair Kits and Radar Disruptor is what I recommend. There are two things that make earning high amounts of rep at night challenging. The first is that once you race a certain race, the amount of rep that is rewarded goes down when you repeat that race, so it gets harder and harder to earn high amounts of rep. Some people might argue that you should either start with the high rep races and get to Heat 5 the fastest, and other people would argue that you should start with the lower rep races so that when you do get to Heat 5 multiplier, you still have all of the high rep races to get the most benefit. Well, both of those people are wrong. The way the multipliers work in this game are like this. The game rewards you with a base amount of rep for doing an activity. Then when your heat level rises, it multiplies that base amount of rep you have by the heat level. It does not matter which order you do the races at all. What matters is the base amount of rep that the race will award you with. Assuming you're able to get to heat five, the amount of rep that you got from the very first race you did multiplied by five is what you'll have. So a race that rewards you with 50,000 rep will actually yield 250,000 rep by the time you get to heat five. The other thing that makes it hard to gain large amounts of rep in one night is the fact that you can only repair yourself three times at a gas station and then two more times with your auxiliary repair kits. This means you have a total of five allowable catastrophic errors and crashes for the entire night. Now let's get into the strategy once you're out. So there are many ways to earn rep, but only a few ways to earn large amounts of rep, and that's what you're looking for. Each race or activity tells you exactly how much rep you will earn from that activity. There are sprint races, circuit races, and drift events. My suggestion is to start with the circuit races because the circuit races tend to be very risky when you have high heat levels. You're going around a track and revisiting the cops. It's just not smart to do later in the night when the heat is super high. After that, move on to the sprint races that are at least 20,000 rep. 20,000 rep will equal 100,000 rep with the heat 5 multiplier. There are a few races I would save for later in the night when you don't have as many options to repair your car, and those are the discovery races. 
there is discovery race A, B, and C, and then the full discovery race. These races reward you well, and they're easy to chain together with little police interference because one race ends where the next race starts. And I recommend staying away from the drift trials. They are way too risky. You are likely to crash, and the police interference can be overwhelming when you have a car set up to drift, not set up to run from the cops. If you're going for millions of rep in one night, you're gonna have to be doing this for hours. So know that you should be averaging about 2 million rep per hour. This is the average rate at which I can earn rep every single time I go out. Now I don't wanna do this, but I have to state the obvious. Millions of rep in one night is not something every single person can do. It takes a lot of care and driving skill to avoid the cop cars, swap vans, and spike strips. Those things are devastating to your car and you need to avoid them like the plague. If you're not good at avoiding those things, 8 million rep in one night might be unobtainable. That being said, there are a few things that you may not know that could help you get better. Number one, cops do not drive more than about 180 to 200 miles an hour, and none of the cops, including the helicopter, do more than 200 miles an hour. The helicopter will also naturally leave you alone if there are no patrol cars chasing you. Now, it may stay on you for a few seconds, but eventually, if you have no patrol cars that are chasing you, the helicopter will disengage. Also, cops are drawn to your GPS location. So knowing the map is better than navigating to places that you wanna go. Also keep in mind, in a solo race, even if you are in an online lobby, you can immediately restart the race if you finish it with no police chasing you. I recommend doing this as often as possible. It limits the amount of risk that you have getting caught by the cops or running into something else on your way to the next race and it instantly puts you in a position to earn more rep without wasting any more time. In addition to that, it is way easier to lose the cops during a race than outside of a race. They seem to fall back faster because there are several targets for them to chase. For example, the AI racers that are racing against you. Another suggestion would be to have a spot that you know how to lose the cops every single time, like the mall rooftop. And this works really good because the mall is almost dead center in the map. So drop a marker on that spot on your map and your marker will always be there and you can see it in the distance. It will act as your North Star if you get into trouble and you need to head there to lose the cops. This is super important guys. Put a marker on the mall rooftop and then you will always see that for the entire duration of the night when you get outside of races. It's a blue marker that you can see sort of in the sky in the distance just like this picture. Also, don't spend too much time looking for the next race and don't drive across the map to get to your next race. The risk of getting hit and damaging your car is not worth the trip. When you end a race, look for the nearest and safest semi-rewarding race. Try to stay above 20,000 rep if possible, but if you dip just a little bit below that, that's okay too. It's better to get to another race and earn more rep then have to be driving across the map where there's a risk of getting hit by a police car or running into something and damaging your car more. Also, when you're in a solo lobby, you can bring up the map and the game will pause, which means the second you finish a race, immediately bring up the map to plan your next move. It allows you to see where the cop cars are, it allows you to figure out which race you're gonna pick next, and everything is paused during that entire time. So. When you finish a race, pull up your map and plan your next move. And this last tip, I know it's gonna be controversial, but do this solo. I've done this with friends and I've done it alone and I've earned more rep per hour alone than I have with friends. I know the game gives you a 40% multiplier for racing with a party member, but the bonus is quickly eaten up by the amount of time you will spend waiting for that friend to lose the cops or the amount of time that friend will spend waiting for you to lose the cops. It is faster alone, trust me. All right, I know for a fact I'm missing something, so if you have your own tips for earning large amounts of rep, 
please leave them in the comment section for everyone else that's watching this video. If you have any questions about this video or any video, you can always hit me up on Instagram. I read every single DM that comes my way, so don't hesitate to send me a message. And shout out to the Militia subs, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for continuing to watch my content. I literally cannot do this without you guys. All right, catch you guys on the next one. Trigger out.